Hi guys, welcome back. Um, as promised to my next video. Now, just before I carry on, um, I would like to say thank you for everybody to subscribe and watching the videos. And of course, smash that like button if you want to carry on seeing more content uh, from my site. Um, as the more and more people see, the more in it gets um, popular and the more it shows up in feeds. And that'll be a big help in getting the channel a bit more publicity and I get my subscription numbers up and so more and more people can see these videos and get the help um, that you guys are receiving. So, so don't forget, subscribe, like and uh, click the bell icon so you can uh, be notified every time a new video comes up just like this one. So following on from the other day, I said I was going to do another video with the plugins. So I'm hoping that all of you have now got set up with um, with the bridge, whether it's the standard or the pro, and that you can then see everything. Okay, uh, sorry, that you control everything with the uh, voice activations, whether it's, uh, whether it's the Amazon or the Google or iOS, or Siri, I should say. Now, one of the differences we were talking about the other day was the fact that the pro has the ability to decode uh, video and that's one thing that the basic bridge well really can't do because it just doesn't have the hardware so what we've done now is i have um got the bridge and the pro and i'm going to start with the first thing i'm going to do is the doorbird integration so Right now, my home center has got nothing uh, regarding the doorbird or anything or uh, Sonos or um, cameras, etc. So I'm going to start with, um, let's go to the plugins and start with the doorbird. So plugins are, uh, they are, um, they have to buy the plugins. They cost $15. Australian dollars and once you click on buy it'll take you directly to the website and you just buy it direct and then they automatically gets licensed for you so I have got mine all enabled and so I can uh, go through them with you now so let's click on add doorbird so we're now going to put the IP address in of the doorbird so I've already configured it and I'm gonna put the IP address in now what I've done is um, and then I'm going to put the username and password in so with the doorbird you have to create a user and password of course there's instructions here that you can use as well but if you've already got a doorbird then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about how to create a, a new user and password so I've already done that um, I've got a, a user created so I'm just gonna put those details in here and I've also got a password created and I'm just gonna paste it into here click on next so it's now connecting ideally make sure your doorbird has got a fixed IP address so I did that within my router so let me just cancel that so now it's added four devices I've got the relay ID, I've got an IR, the LED ID, and I've got the camera device ID. Now, way back when I first did this, the camera was added, but after updates, the camera got removed because it was taking up so much memory. But now it's back again because I'm on the Pro Bridge. So click on OK. And there we have the different IDs. So now all I have to do is click on there and I don't even have to refresh the page as all icons now have appeared here so all we then have to do is as usual we can then click so if you click on here you can actually see it's all online and everything and how long it updates and all i'm going to do is now just hide that device so i don't need it the led to be honest with you i'm not really bothered about so i'm going to hide that as well um, so click on save that leaves me with the relay which i need so this is the doorbird relay so this is a relay that would um 
it's like me pressing the key button on whilst talking to him on the phone. So I'll uncheck that, save to history, save it. And I'm just gonna move that to the garden room. Um, and that's it there. And then we go back onto here to now the camera. And I'm gonna change that one to gardens as well. Oops, gardens advanced and then these are just the um, all the settings just to uncheck that click on save and click on preview and then that's the preview from my doorbell okay so we know it's working and I'm just gonna rename that to doorbird cam and that's it all set so if I go click on home, I can scroll down to my garden room and there it is. So I'm just going to, so that now is um, all done and dusted and it's simple as that to do. Next, we are going to set up the integration with what happens when we press the doorbell. So let me update the scenes. So uh, where's the scenes? So here I'm going to look for my doorbell scene. So front doorbell and doorbell trigger lock. So these two scenes. So basically, if I look at the front doorbell scene, all that I'm gonna say is as soon as somebody presses the doorbell, it will, it will um, take a picture. Sorry, it will, it will send a signal to my internal siren which I've got and then that will start playing a t jingle which I've already created uh, so that does that so that means when somebody presses the doorbell it's like ringing an internal chime uh, but using the AOTEX siren 6 so and as you know that's got eight different tones and I've selected one of them for this and then the others I'm using for alarm systems the second thing I want it to do is send me a picture to my email so that will then just send me a picture to my email. And the third thing is I've got that voice monkey, if you look back, to make announcements through the um, the dots, Amazon dots and um, uh, voice dot that I've got. Okay. And then any other code I wanted to run when somebody presses the doorbell, I can do that here. The second part, the trigger lock. Now on the relay, on the, Fibar, uh, on the doorbird relay, it's linked up to a smart implant. So when I press that button, the key button, whilst I'm talking to the person, it triggers the smart implant. Or if I press the key button in the software called Doorbird Relay, again, it triggers the same smart implant. And then all I ask it to do is just basically unlock the door and uh, send me a message that the door's been unlocked, all right? Um, so that's simple coding on that one. Again, I can ask it to do anything. So if uh, if we had an electric gate, um, it would then uh, open the gate. So I can make it do, you can make it do anything really, whatever you want it to do. So now let's get these um, pushed in. So this one is automatically, so doorbell trigger lock is preset, is scenes. So if I go back onto my doorbell scene, front doorbell scene is 63. So now I have to go back into my bridge, click on the pencil icon. So, and then when I press button scene, so that's when you press the doorbell, I want it to run the scene number 63, which is the front doorbell. When a motion is detected, I could, I could have another scene for motion detection uh, for it to play a different tone, but uh, a bit annoying. So that's why I've left that switched off for now. And I'm just going to hit on update. So now every time somebody presses the doorbell, it would automatically run the doorbell scene. Uh, number 63, which is activate a tone, send me a picture and uh, play it on the Alexa speakers in the, in the, in the rooms. Okay. And then every time we press the key icon, it will automatically once I update it again with the correct numbers, it will automatically um, trigger a smart implant, which will then trigger my scene 
to run the unlock my doors okay so that's part one finished um if you hang around and what i'll do is go back to the home screen and the next one we're going to go to is the let's do let's do sonos so we'll do sonos in a bit so give me a second and i'm just gonna get a quick drink and then i'll do sonos i'll uh, speak to you soon right part two um just get myself a copper um while i was getting the copper i was thinking about the sonos plugin now um i've just rejigged my network in my whole house and created uh, vlans which is a subject for another video about separating everything all the traffic within the property now one of the things i'm thinking about is whether um, sonos would be picked up in in here now to be honest with you, i'm not really too bothered about adding sonos but i just wanted to show you that it can be done and what it can do now with sonos it allows you to have the usual controls such as uh, play pause forward and uh, back a track um play maybe uh, uh some of the you know like the radio stations but really it's limited to that now okay here it is only Sonos speakers on the same IP subnet uh, will be discovered. This means that um, mine, they're not going to be discovered. So uh, if I just do that, it's not going to be, it's not going to be found because they're on a different subnet, different IP address. So what we'll do is um, instead, I'm going to refer back to the way I control uh, Sonos, um, which does work using the bridge software called the sonos node bridge uh, i feel that that has actually got more control better control of your sonos network than the than than through automation the native skill for sonos as well if i go back onto here settings add device other and if you scroll down uh, the different plugins you have you have the sonos plugin so again the problem with that one is it will only find it on the same subnet so you know what let's just do it so click on uh, add in fact i'm not going to on this one i'm going to switch to my test one and um, click on start other and click on Sonos, click on add. So it's adding the device. And in the meantime, just open up the Sonos app. And I'm going to uh, Sonos, pref not preferences, uh, about my system. So so let's have a look here. So IP addresses. So these are the IP addresses of the different devices. So let's use this one, 1001.48. Okay, let's just put that here. Uh, click on settings, advanced preview notifications. So uh, let's have a look, it's not, click on manage, nope. I've not used the native skill so i'm going to see. so it hasn't picked up oh here it is so if i click on search there let's see if it does find again it needs to be on the same subnet as as the um as the home center so if i click on that and hit save preview it nothing there nothing plays nothing comes on and i can see that from uh, from here nothing's nothing's happening in the kitchen so again it has to be on the same subnet network so that doesn't work so let's get rid of it so what does that mean then it means that we're going to have to run the the sonos node 
system so if you have got um so where is it sonos node qa so this one doesn't matter what network it's on because the the sonos bridge that i have got is actually on the same network as the sonos's so all i have to do is because we just send a command to to that is uh, we just have to update it with the different uh, with the ip of the node bridge and then it would play whatever we want it to play and all the different uh, radio stations that i've got so i've reset my network up so i don't have anything set up just yet but that's how it would be done and that's probably the only way and with that not only do you get your standard controls like play forward stop volume etc but i can always you can always create your own uh, presets for playlists radio stations and things like that rather than having to use a sonos app to to um to play your favorite playlist and then you can use sonos sorry you use a sonos app to create to to, to load up your playlist before using the home center or bridge to actually do your play pause commands etc so what i'm gonna do again i'm gonna leave it here and uh, go back onto the home page um before going back on to do the harmony stuff okay so that's our next one we're going to be doing no not the harmony the ubiquity We'll do Ubiquity first, as I still need to set up my Harmony. Um, so we'll do the Ubiquity first, as that's ready uh, to add. And then um, that's our next job.